and again, travel not recommended until this passes through. You got this afternoon, folks, okay? So if anyone wants to know, this afternoon you're going to have a window of time to go do what you need to do. But right now, I wouldn't get out there until this passes. It's not just not a good move, especially with winds out there in a potential threat of uh, trees or any power lines being uh, disrupted. So we uh, are keeping you updated here on radar on the latest track of severe thunderstorm warning, which has a capability of producing a uh, possible weak spin-up tornado. But it's the extensiveness of all of a good chunk of Muskogee County now going into areas of Fortson. And I don't want to leave you guys out in Harris County here either, uh, in Rehoboth. And you could see lifting north and east on this track, it'll, it'll take you to Asahatchee here when you get north of Ellerslie, just south of Waverly Hall, and up the Ridgeway, and you get on a 208, and you get into, you know, areas south. This is 315, my bad. 208 farther north, 315 south. And it gets into Forts Inn. It gets all the way back to Catala. These areas here, you're all in this Midland in Georgia on the Muskogee side in Midland, considering the areas that take you to County Line Road up into Harris County. And these are the areas you need to be mindful of as it continues to lift north and east. So um, certainly there could be some broad circulation with this. We're worried about areas now in Flat Rock, East Columbus, and now going into, if you're at Fortson and Catala, I would start taking a, a safe spot. If you're in Midland, I would be thinking safe spot right now too. So here's some recommendations that we want to remind you of. Stay inside. If you're in a mobile home, you never stay in a mobile home or a car. You, you must get out and get into a more structured building, center part, central, lowest part of a building. Put as many walls between you and the outside, and always interior section of a room with no windows or a bathroom closet is always a good thing because if they're central too, it adds a lot of structural support around you. Cover your head as always. And uh, of course, our news and weather apps are live streaming. If you feel the need, you got to stay in a place that's not safe. Keep your weather app with you if you have to. We're streaming all the time here. We're on Q1073 right now, and uh, we're on social media and Facebook too. If my battery has not run out already on my phone, we need to check that. So if somebody in production will do that for me in a minute because that, that's got to be done. Uh, we're also on all our Twitter accounts too. The First Alert Weather Team, uh, myself, Kurt Schmitz, uh, Carmen Rose, Cody Nickel. Uh, WRBL First Alert, hashtag WRBL Weather, if you want to do that to send us any pictures. So back to the um, radar, even though we don't have anything to talk about in terms of noticeable damage or anything, we are still keeping on this track. And if you are in Waverly Hall, I would just go ahead even in these areas. And even if you take the track here, Cody, let's just take an outside edge of the velocity scan where the, distinct, uh, the wind um, profile thing is here so we can kind of see where that line is and we can just kind of, we'll just pull this all the way out here and it'll take us uh, a little bit out here. Okay, so if we're in Asahatchee area, we get south of Waverly Hall, this will be about 40 minutes after the hour, so it's about 10 minutes from now. Uh, Waverly Hall coming up about 10 to the hour, okay, so it's 34 minutes after the hour. Box Springs, uh, again, should all be in a safe spot now. This is just taking precautionary measure. Nothing has been spotted, nothing reported at this point. But this is what's been going on all morning. It happens and it disappears. And there's still the wind capability of damage and all the way out to Junction City, too. Um, chat seems to be quiet, Cody. I haven't heard much on that right now. They're uh, just talking about the okay. circulation in, uh, in southern uh, Harris County. Just says it is uh, tightening, but there's still no warning Thank you, on this uh, oh. storm at the moment. But we are getting some gusty winds. Now, we do have the tornado warning, rather, for... Uh, Lee and Chambers was allowed to expire at uh, 1030, but we do have another one down in Barber County. That is our only tornado warning at the moment. Very rural out here across Barber County. Um, mainly air, the main area of concern is just to the west of Louisville, right there along Alabama 130, where, that, where we have this little indention right there is where we're getting that rotation in uh, Barber County. But uh, although we do have uh, our friends down here in Barber County, we're going to go back up to the Columbus storm. It's impacting more people, although I don't want to forget about you in Barber County. We are watching this line as it continues to move into Clayton, Louisville, parts of Clio, Baker Hill, even Eufaula is technically in this warning, but Barber County is a 
a big county. Still has a ways to go until it gets to the easternmost portions of Barber County. But I wanted to let you know what's going on in Barber County. We do have some strong gusty winds up in uh, northern Barber. Even into Russell County. Russell County is just seeing all the gusty winds right now, not under any warning at the moment across uh, Russell County. Even Fort Benning seeing that strong gust front right now at the moment with the onset of precipitation. And now we have a tornado warning for Harris County, Muskogee County, and Talbot County until 11 o'clock this morning. And that is going to be around. Uh, right around Fortson, Catala, so Waverly Hall, and I'm going to throw this to Bob. Good, that's what we're just telling you. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the center part of that circulation now. Uh, if you are in Waverly Hall, south of areas gate of 2, gate, two eight, gate to Gate, yeah, it is the Gate to Gate pit school, and that's not good. When we see that kind of uh, uh, area right here, of that is good rotation actually in and out right around this area right here. So if we zoom in here, we can almost take that and get street level on that. And... Um, there we go. Okay, so Fortune Road area. There we go. You're, it, it, this is right in, uh, right in your area right now. So it's just passing Fortune Road. Uh, uh, Catala, anyone in the Catala South on 27 Veterans Parkway, in other words, and running up north, you need to be in a safe spot immediately right now as we continue to track this. Uh, you could see this coming up to 315 here where Kinks and Catala passes to, uh, 27. You know this area here quite well. Anybody in this area right now should be seeking shelter immediately. Turn time crossroads is still well up to your north. Not too concerned about this yet. And uh, as we get into Harris Road and in Ellerslie, you should be thinking that way too. That's in the far right part of your screen. As we update you on social media too, we're going to do that. And I'm going to stay right on this continually and watch this as it continues to uh, move. Th this is probably moving at quite a, a rate here. Each sweep of radar coming out of Peachtree City is giving us a vital scan we need to see. Here's pixel to pixel here too with potential. Moving at 50 miles an hour. Moving at 50 miles an hour. So if we uh, go ahead, let's do a 50. Sorry, Carl, I want to mess you up there because I, I want you to keep doing what you're doing. But we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll just put that out here so I can give folks this kind of perspective. But as we watch this, you are in Catala, anywhere around the whole Catala area, Mulberry Creek area too. You know what I'm talking about, anywhere around that area on 315 coming off. Um, 185 too, when you, you see that, here's 185 and you got 315, you get right into this area, Catala, Mulberry Creek, um, the Creekside area where the elementary school is, these areas where the water tower is, those neighborhoods you should be seeking shelter right now. Um, we also have, um, let me just take this for you too, we're keeping an eye on uh, live pictures for their outdoors too as well, but we're going to stay on this because this is the most pressing one right now at, as we speak. So Catala, Rehoboth, all the way into areas all around Catala, 315. Taking you all the way up to what we call the Pine Ridge uh, Elementary School area, all the way to Harris Road, this will probably continue turn time crossroads. It appears that this circulation is still may, even on this extended track, would be northwest of Ellerslie. But as we get uh, north, as we get into areas here from Asahatchee, all the way back up into Waverly Hall, that appears to be the best area now of where that could track. But if you're in Ellerslie, you need to stay with us. Pay close attention because this is tracking very fast, and we want to make sure everybody's safe in this respect. Um, so we'll continue on this track here. We don't have any, let me just back out of the shot. Let's do, what about a correlation coefficient? Let's just give that a shot, Cody, and see. I think it's just radar indicated at the moment based upon the uh, velocity scan coming from the peach tree radar. Even though it's a little further away, it has the best indication of uh, rotation. There's some weak rotation on the Maxwell radar. Uh, as I'll show this to you here. This is coming out of Peachtree City. If we just scoot it a little bit, a little here. This is the other radar in Alabama that's getting another scan on it. So uh, a little more broad in sense here. So the Peachtree City radar gets a better handle on the storm in uh, southern Harris County. Yeah, the, absolutely. <coughs> now, and you can see that the, the, still the wind threat with this, the torrential rain, it still continues. Here's Waverly Hall. Now, the confusion may lie with why are we still in this polygon of severe thunderstorm warning. I said this earlier, when there's a severe thunderstorm warning, likely there's always a capability of a tornado. And, and in fact, they just went ahead and just overrode that. So we are more concerned about any kind of wind damage and circulation. You can see a little kink on the radar. The radar probably tells a good picture here, uh, almost better than the velocity to show you kind of that uh, little rotation that's going on. And it, of course, it's very micro on the this, on this scale. But Catala is in that path. 
Waverly Hall, you should be already getting in your safe spot. Even Waverly Hall, a lot of friends and residents up there. Anybody in mobile homes or anything, I would really encourage you to get to the local fire department here or wherever you know where to go. I mean, if you know where your safe spots are, more structured areas, just, just to be extra safe, even though we don't have anything confirmed at this point. And, um, and especially if we are on the 315 area here, it appears everything is north of that. And then there's 208. So it's kind of between Highway 208 and 315 coming through areas of Harris County. So Ellerslie, a lot of residents there too. As we get into Taylor and Talbot counties, you're okay at this point. But it's just south, south of that area. You're looking okay right now. But stay with us if you can online and on here, and we'll keep you posted. But at this point, it appears to be running almost directly in the middle of this. Catala is the biggest city right now around uh, Highway 27, which if we can, we can. Um, it get tight and you know and show you what we're talking about here because this is the area that we need to be concerned about so let's get a little closer on street level so there you are Catala uh, you should be in your safe spot right now I told you about Harris Road here and uh, albeit rural we could show you some of our, our neighborhoods in here and some of these developments that are in here too let me back out of the shot here because of course um, we're looking at uh, Gin Road and north and south of this area here Holland Road Lynn Drive these are the areas that we're all talking about right through here. There's Johnson Road. It comes off of 27. Here's Catala area that we're talking about. Chambliss Road is also in that same line as it continues to race quickly. But if anybody is over in Harris and uh, Mayo Road, uh, Douglas Drive, these neighborhoods here, as you can see to the south, a little bit more populated down here with some development. Uh, to the north, it's, it seems to be a little bit more sporadic, but we have a lot of residents kind of sprinkled in here too off of these roads uh, in Harris County. So you really want to consider taking maybe a little little safe spot right now as soon as you can. Um, latest scan is not too impressive. Good news. I'm just happy to hear that this is not showing me anything. But uh, again, back uh, across uh, Catala, there's still you got this uh, crazy broad circulation going on. It's just the wind damaging effect. But again, with this, as it continues to ride up to the north and east towards Waverly Hall, those would be the areas that I would probably be most concerned about uh, as far as seeking some kind of shelter. Cody. Um, we are getting a uh, debris signature down around our Barber County storm. Let's we'll try and get that to you. This is just north of the Louisville area. This uh, came out maybe about three minutes ago. Just right north of Louisville is where that TDS signature is on the uh, on that line right there, just that little kink in that brief here. spin up and uh, causing some damage uh, based upon Doppler radar, giving that a giving that observe tag. So uh, I tracked this out for you. You can see uh, Lindsay, Pratt's, Oatston, and Sandy Point, even Eufaula in the path of this storm. I took the whole line because you could get this br a brief spin up all along that line across Barber County as it continues to push to the east there at about 55 miles per hour. Now also we're getting reports of some damage in Crawford in Russell County. A, sh a metal uh, from a I guess a building in a yard and tree damage north of Crawford and it could be a possible tornado. This is according to the National Weather Service out of Peachtree City. So some possible wind damage or tornado damage in Crawford uh, with sheet metal scattered throughout a yard and the tree damage there. But let's get back to our storm up in Harris County. This is where we have that active tornado warning as well across parts of US 27 that takes you up to Hamilton uh, 208 take, taking you back to uh, just north of Catala back to Waverly Hall and then parts of uh, 3, 6, 315 rather and then Georgia 85 or alternate 27 that's where the main area of concern right there right just to the southwest of Waverly Hall uh, Shiloh, I don't think technically is in this warning. The uh, tornado should move towards your uh, south right there and impact Waverly Hall more than Shiloh uh, across Harris County. Yeah, I think a lot of folks too in this area, they know Highway 28 quite well. And uh, as it eventually meanders and goes into Taylor County, but in Talbot counties. But this is, um, this area here is what we're looking at. And that's about right where <coughs> 208 comes into Waverly Hall in this area. That's just to the south of that and to the north. And we want everybody to be mindful of this. Hamilton, albeit, is not in that, and it's still tornado warning. You may be hearing this in the city of Hamilton. It's all well south of you and southwest, as Cody was just pointing out. A lot of lightning and very heavy rain ahead of that. And it's starting to lift north and east out of here uh, fast. And again, if you're in Ellerslie, you're okay. This is farther north. So we are tracking a potential weak circulation 
weak tornado through here, and that's why we're staying on this track because a lot of people can be impacted, of course. So as this continues north and east in this area, you're under a tornado warning because it's Doppler indicated. We're seeing an outflow area of, of strong winds, a very long line of winds, and very, very heavy rain indicated here in the radar. You can see each swipe in the red. It's almost torrential. It's coming down, and embedded in that, there's a little weak circulation. It's not to panic. It's just to get into your safe spots and in the lowest part of a floor, interior room, or a hallway, obviously, and always get away from windows. Any flying debris or anything falling down could shatter glass, and you know the rest of that. Mobile homes are not uh, certainly something we don't want to be even considering, and if you are outside and you had to run out real quick, always seek shelter the best you can, but get in the low-lying area, a low ravine or something like that, but watch for any drainage and water. But uh, again, this is what we need to be thinking about with these kind of things, especially going into tonight and to tomorrow before this whole system kicks out of here. So even at uh, the velocity latest scan here, you can see in this area here, it looks like now we're pulling a little bit. It's now, see how it keeps ebbing on, the, on this line. It goes north and south. So turn time crossroads, Asahatchee, as we said, Ellerslie, I would still, if there's anybody just north of this area, you're still okay the way this is coming in, but there's still energy behind it. So Ellerslie, I would say, right along 315 northward, just no panic here. But if you have a second floor, we've got a lot of friends that do that, and they got their man caves up there, get, get lower just to be safe. It's better to be safe than sorry. And just stay in the lower part of your house right now, especially in Asahatchee, Waverly Hall, Turn Time Crossroads, as this continues to lift north and east very fast. Anyone south of this, the Central Church area, uh, it was just pretty big and it goes all the way to the county line, you're okay. But I would still take that precaution anyway, because anything along this line has been kind of doing real fickle stuff. So if you are in those areas, uh, be mindful of that too. If you can, please just uh, probably get more central of the house and uh, just try to stay away from those areas. Concern? Tree limbs, trees, all that kind of stuff with any of these wind gusts up to 40, 45. Uh, we haven't seen anything exceeding more than that uh, earlier, but again, around turn time crossroads would likely be the best place now to be seeking shelter at this given time and Waverly Hall. Oak Mountain, as Cody pointed out, get up near Shiloh area, that's well south of Shiloh off of 27, still looks okay, or alternate 85, it's referred to as you come into uh, Harris County. And uh, at that point, going um, northward, could still be some winds and gusty winds going in and outside of Pine Mountain. Hamilton, you're already pretty much in the clear, and uh, Kingsboro as well. It's just more what's coming out a little bit off to the east now towards Waverly Hall. And really, at this juncture, eastern Harris County, north of 315. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Um, the circulation is down just south of Turn Time Crossroads. Here is Highway 208 here that eventually connects right into 27. This is just south and east in these neighborhoods here. Go down in here. There's a lot of new developments here, Cody, but this street level may not be updated, but I do know a lot of new development here uh, south and east of Turn Time Crossroads off of 208. So any of our friends here, uh, a lot of new development in there that needs to uh, certainly take shelter. And you know where you're at because you know where uh, areas around, um, uh, let me just back up here. From Turn Time Crossroads, you go through here, I could speak a little more clear. We have Harris Road and Denny Road. We all connect. These are some new developments that have been developed. Saunders Road, which is a little bit farther off of the screen, off this way in Harris County, all should be seeking shelter at this time. So Turn Time Crossroads, 208 southward, and this is just all east of Highway 27. In uh, Hamilton, you guys are doing okay, but in this area here is where you should be seeking shelter as close as you can. Okay, we're talking Talbot County because right along that same line of 208 that goes into Talbot County, so folks in Talbot County should start realizing over in the western part of Talbot County to really start seeking some uh, shelter too. Talbotton, you're not in it just yet, but uh, Talbot County, you certainly are seeing some issues there as well. Tremendous amount of lightning in here north of that, all north of Highway 80, so Geneva, Junction City, you still got to keep an eye out that there could still be some strong damaging winds, even though you're not in the actual warning itself, even though we see some circulation that's been holding up here coming closer to Waverly Hall as we speak near Turn Time Crossroads, Harris Road right now. Those are the areas that should be seeking shelter and taking it as far south. Let's take it as far south here, Cody. You see the heavy rain and thunder south of Waverly Hall. And of course, it kind of gets, if you're, you're seeing a lot of that, even though you're in the Central Church area, County Line area, and going into Talbot County, there's still that potential that kind of disappeared on me. But, but it kind of gives you that same particular area if we could track that for you. Look at this line from Casita, Fort Benning, all the way through here, Chattahoochee County, into Buena Vista now. Now we're going to be starting to talk about Central Georgia. All these areas, just wondering when this is coming your way. Well, if you're in Casita, 1053, 
And of course, this is Georgia. We're talking about Talbotton. We're talking about 1105 Buena Vista, around 18 after, 31 minutes after. Butler, all Georgia now. And uh, Rupert, of course, uh, at 32 minutes after. By that point, it's getting really quickly out of the area. This would still put it before midday hour. So afternoon, we should see a brief window of some clearing. Even though there'll be some showers on again, off again through the day, uh, we can end up seeing um, some improvements for now because there's two other waves coming in late tonight and early Sunday morning and again on Sunday afternoon. So here we are looking at uh, the tornado warning in Harris County as it lists north and east near Waverly Hall. Uh, this area here is of concern right now. You see a little kink that's right along that line and typically as we start seeing a little rotation, we'll get a little closer to see how we're looking. Still have it, still showing up here. It looks like now it's getting extreme north, north portions of this polygon and getting across the turn time crossroads here. Waverly Hall, you may be okay now, it looks like, but you're still the wind threat. Oak Mountain area, I'd keep an eye out. This is all south of Shiloh, and uh, so keep that in mind if you, you, you start getting in this area. So Highway 208, kind of north of that area, but still Waverly Hall, especially in the western side of this on 208, should still be mindful of the potential of seeing some kind of rotation on this as well. Cody. That's right, and uh, we're continuing to track this up until 11 o'clock. This is when the warning expires. It actually, uh, nine minutes here, so we could have an addition to this if it continues its strengthen and tightening with that rotational couplet between uh, or just right near turn time crossroads, as Bob was saying. So Waverly Hall, you may miss the tornado threat, but the wind threat is still on the southern edge of this storm. But if, Oak, but if you're in Oak Mountain, Pine Mountain Valley, uh, that uh, stretch of 116 that uh, t interjects or right there at uh, 354 back up until Shiloh, you may need to be taking your tornado pr precaution and safety uh, area, safety plan up around uh, near Shiloh, technically not in the warning, but could be an extension if they decide to extend this into northern portions of uh, Harris County, even into Talbot County, around uh, Flint Hill and the uh, Cunningham Crossroads. And you can see that. It's taking a real sharp trajectory here. As you can see, Cody, you're right, and, and just to the south and west of that, too. So you can see that. So certainly quite a bit of energy here as it continues to lift north and east here. So uh, quite busy indeed. There's no question about that and, and, and seeing that. So even though Talbot County is in part of this, this would be your extreme western portions of Talbot County you would be probably more at risk of seeing some damaging wind in this respect uh, as, as we speak. Um, it, let's keep this radar image up here and let everybody know again if you are in the Waverly Hall area north and west of this going into Pine Mountain, not Pine Mountain Valley, Oakview area, Mountain area, these are the areas you should be seeking shelter. We could go live right now. We got uh, executive producer um, Diana Zito. Uh, there she is out there. And Diana, you kind of went through that uh, little tornado warning, little spin, it was Doppler indicated. What did you experience, Diana? Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, we just got a poor connection here. If Diane here, there we go. We're back on. Go can ahead, you hear Diane. Me? Yes, okay, I do. I got you now. Okay, yeah. so yeah, before we had, uh, right after I got off with you guys before, we had just a torrential downpour. It was, you know, sheets of rain coming through the area. You could definitely see the wind swirling a little bit. Um, I went inside uh, and took shelter real quick. It was very quick, about two to three minutes. Um, now in this area though, we're seeing a lot of lightning and thunder. Um, still a little bit of sprinkling, some, a little bit of flooding, and uh, like down in my yard, you see the overflow over here. Um, but it's mostly calm for now, just some lightning and thunder. But it was it did get a little scary a few minutes ago, and I did send some video into you guys um, of what I was seeing there, just the sheets of rain coming through and the swirling that you can kind of see on the concrete sometimes when uh, when those storms with the swirling winds come through. Yeah, good. So, good right now, for the most part, pretty calm. Good, and you sound calm, and that's good. I like that. <laughs> you did the right thing, and Diana did the right thing. She was out in her car earlier, and she knew to get out of the car and do the right thing, get out of there. Diana, we had some reports over in uh, Crawford of some damage to a structural building uh, that was uh, indicated by somebody who was a spotter. Something was official on that. 
and again some Crawford area, southern Lee County, northern Russell County, possibly seen some uh, minor damage before it approached Smith, Alabama. So uh, glad you're okay, and uh, we'll, we'll get more reports as we go along. And, and thanks for keeping us updated this morning. We'll go back to Diana as needed. Appreciate it, Diana. All right, thanks, Bob. Good morning, and thanks. So uh, the, the warning continues here, although we don't have anything distinct. We have been looking around Waverly Hall again, and north and east of that is really where we're looking at that main circulation. Ellerslie seen tremendous amount of lightning and some very heavy rainfall, as you could see. So uh, Talbotton, you're going to see some possible wind damage here any minute now. 55 minutes coming up at the 11 o'clock hour as we are tracking Woodland and Manchester. Uh, you could see the distinct line, two of them. It kind of kinks a little bit. We have it up here and a little bit kind of uh, kind of ejecting a little bit south and east of that. But here we do have some circulation to talk about. And uh, this is just south and west of uh, Oak Mountain. Turn time crossroads. This is Highway 28 as we're talking about. If there's any risk of any kind of maybe weak rotation, Doppler indicated tornado is right here. And it's coming, uh, again, right along uh, areas of 27 or what we call, this is not Veterans Parkway 27, mind you. This is alternate 85, okay, just so you know. And this is the alternate that used to be the old uh, Interstate 185 days years and years ago. Many years ago, they would take you up to Atlanta. But, but people here uh, need to be uh, certainly hunkered down and keeping a watchful eye and certainly getting in your safe spot. If you are off of Alt 8527 here, just to the east of this, you should be in your safe spot right now. In fact, Cody, is it, it almost looks like, is it going due east or is it still sharp northeast along? I would say it's moving northeast. Let's see how that the is. The trajectory of it. Let's back, let me yeah, back it out. It looks like it almost has almost an east, but maybe yeah, a wider view of shows. And look at the wind as this is starting to bow out south of Waverly Hall. Uh, areas here, if you're in Talbotton, Geneva, be prepared for some strong gusty winds. Uh, Buffalo Simon, our next guy watcher in Mock, George, will keep an eye on. But you could see where that rotation is in this particular area right here where my finger is, well north of Waverly Hall. That's good news. So if you're in Ellerslie, Catala, you're all clear. Shiloh, uh, you're not out, but you're pretty much not worried about any of this down here. And this continues to ride as it goes into the woodland area and just south of Manchester, this, this whole line here. So that's just Meriwether County. It looks okay. And, but this will be all moving more into the Talbot County area as we speak. And it looks like Taylor, you, you'll just be getting winds uh, farther south and east from that. So Waverly Hall is okay now. Uh, you guys are doing okay, so you can get out of your safe thing and, and, you know, and you did the right thing there. But the circulation now north of Waverly Hall, as we're telling you, and that continues almost on the northeast easterly trajectory right here as that could be a potential area of circulation or a tornado. And again, still showing up on the velocity, quite sharp indeed, and uh, worried about even some strong damaging winds, strong winds right along this line, which is literally almost south of Shiloh and just north of Waverly Hall now. And uh, that would be all north of Highway 208 and headed into uh, the Woodland area off of uh, Georgia 36, Highway 36 here. And in Georgia 90, where it all kind of springs in here, south of Talbotton here with Geneva, could even see some of those uh, strong winds too. So uh, everybody south and west, Catala, you're okay. Everybody's good all east of that. Hamilton, you're looking good. Thumbs up so you can kind of relax now. Pine Mountain, we're doing okay. And the areas now we're looking at with uh, potential strong winds, maybe some minor damage, the Shiloh area, but the potential tornado that we've been tracking is just south of Shiloh and well north of Waverly Hall, and it continues that whole area, a little weak circulation to the north and east of uh, Highway 208 and going into areas of Georgia uh, 36 right now. Back to you, Cody. That is right, and that's where that area of circulation continues to be located. Now we still have a tornado warning for Barber County. It is approaching uh, parts of uh, Eufaula, Baker Hill, Baker Hill, so the eastern portion of Barber County. Now, not, now let's check velocity. Haven't seen a very strong rotational couplet here, mainly just a very strong straight line damaging wind uh, event associated with this line stretching from back up into Russell County, back into Barber County here. So Baker Hill, Eufaula, even if you're in Quitman County, Quitman County and Clay County across the river, even Stewart County, Randolph County, and the, the uh, city of Cuthbert, Coleman. This is going to be pushing into you. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Quitman County and the northern portion of Clay County there. Uh, not sure of the ex expiration time or when it goes to, but there is a uh, warning for Quitman and Clay County, but it's only a severe thunderstorm warning, which 
can produce damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour. With this, not really a tornadic threat with this, although we have a tornado warning for Barber County, our main area of concern. Actually, it looks like they uh, dropped the warning as it is 11 o'clock here, so we'll wait and see if they extend it. Uh, for Harris County. It's moved more into the northwest portion of Talbot County here, right around Shiloh. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, still no update if they extended it. We are seeing several areas of rotation just to the west of Talbotton here. So this, this seems like it gets an area of rotation, produces a brief spin up, kind of occludes off, and then we get another uh, generation of a tornado to start to develop uh, across the area. You can see just around Talbotton there is, looks like the new area of rotation as a northern one would uh, occlude, weaken, and dissipate as it in intensifies or weakens with the uh, rain that it gets into its inflow basically. Uh, so right now we're going to be watching uh, Got another warning here, Cody. <coughs> it's just a severe thunderstorm, thunderstorm warning, warning yeah. for uh, Talbot, Talbot County and Upson County. And I'm surprised they didn't extend the tornado warning. Yeah. But uh, we'll continue to track this because it's still a damaging wind threat to life and proper property in Talbot County. Woodland, uh, between Woodland and Talbotton there is, uh, is where the warning goes and stretches back into parts of uh, southern portions of Upson County there, but we are watching this area of rotation around the Olive Branch area uh, off of uh, going back from Bauville back up into Talbotton. That's where we are seeing some areas of rotation. We do have that old area of rotation just crossing the Harris County, Talbot County line just around Oak Mountain and the Hawkins Crossroads area. So uh, 208 uh, Georgia 41. If you live or know somebody who lives on this, just give them a call and give them a heads up. And they may not know about this weather event at all. And here we have an update on the velocity. And it, there's some very strong winds, winds yeah. coming into Talbotton. So I will not be surprised if we get damage reports coming out of Talbot County and Talbotton. Yeah, good thing we, uh, we stayed on that one. And indeed, this has been. Uh, the whole story this morning along this line has been wind. It's been wind, wind, wind with weak spin up tornadoes right along the line as it continues to go through. It's, it's every time you see a kink like this, as Cody was saying, this, this return, you see this real big kind of arc here and it, it kind of it goes off towards the south and east and is sharp down near Geneva. If you're in Geneva, Junction City, even um, in these areas as we get out and we have a, we have a lot of viewers through this area, Talbot County here, uh, up through the woodland area. Uh, these areas here all the way down and off to the east could certainly see some wind damage with us, especially where it's kinking here. Talbotton, uh, the city of Talbotton right now, you should be kind of hunkered down in your safe spot and uh, make sure that you're uh, aware of this. Just because it's not maybe a tornado, these kind of winds can do structural damage as we've been seeing this morning. We had some in Southern Lee County reported a tree on top of a sheet metal building. and uh, that got a new damage report damage in report. from Catala. Well, okay, that, that, that says a lot about what this whole line Emergency is. Yeah. management is reporting nine trees down in the city of Catala. Okay. That's One was hit by a car and another is on a house. So this was a very strong storm as it moved through southern parts of uh, Harris County, and that's why we're still watching this as it is in yeah. Talbot County right now. We will not get off of it. So good point, Cody. Thank you. And uh, <coughs> again, for our friends at Catala, thank you for that report. Hopefully everybody's okay. Do not try to go out there and assess damage, because with <coughs> trees down like that, and there's numerous trees in Catala when we were on this just moments ago, this is the risk that it, it poses, that trees are on power lines, and when they snap like that, there are rings of electricity for many, many feet that can electrocute somebody. Not advised at all to go out there to try to assess any damage on your house. Please call emergency officials. It's most important we're on your side with that tip. We are looking at this kind of coming into Talva County, the same system here. This is the same portion of this storm that was back. Here's Waverly Hall. was all the way back over in Catala earlier, okay? And uh, once it came into Catala right through here, it continued on the same track. And look where it's doing right now as a severe thunderstorm warning. But it's that whole line that's creating a lot of problems for these areas indeed. So um, areas around here that need to watch, uh, especially around Geneva and Southford going into Taylor County and into uh, Talva counties, need to keep an eye on this at least uh, for the most part. And most of this is Talva County we're showing you here with Taylor South. That line does extend farther south, and it is creating a lot of issues. 
Down in Barber County, though, we'll go a little bit farther south now and show you guys are also dealing with your uh, same, same line here in a, a different respect. And Eufaula, you should be getting in your safe spot right now, too. There's so many trees in Eufaula. <clears throat> now that we're getting close to this, we'll focus on you down here in Barber County. Is at 431, right through Baker Hill, you follow up this whole line here. As you can see, very sharp line, wind, wind, and torrential rain coming your way, and enough that could certainly topple trees quite easily. Look how sharp that line is, and this is a wind we're talking about that's um, kind of ejecting ahead of this. It's flowing right out, and, and with this, we're not seeing in this particular angle of this as it's coming in, would pose maybe. Um, any kind of weak tornado, but it's more of a long line of damaging wind in the respect that we're looking here. And understand the tornado warning, but it doesn't mean, oh, I had all this wind damage to tornado. It doesn't matter. This still poses a significant risk. Any trees that come down on homes, there's more people injured, seriously injured, and uh, in some cases, in the worst case scenario, uh, it being fatal when you have trees toppling down on homes and power lines and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the, any tornado risk would be very minute, uh, minuscule on a scale, but it's the, the broad scale of wind damage is what we're most concerned about in Barber County right now as it continues to move towards Cuthbert in Randolph County and Randolph County should be hanging on next in uh, areas of Stewart County as well and even back down into uh, the southern portions here south of uh, areas of Barber County. But for our viewers sake, Clay Quitman, Randolph counties, we're going to be watching you. It would include Fort Gaines, if it includes you up here in Cuthbert, and it would also include all the folks in Weston, getting in Webster County, Stewart counties too. So please keep that in mind. There's some changes going on very quickly with this line coming in, a torrential rain and a potential threat of damaging wind. We can even do, let's do a quick analysis on tracking this, but we won't go, um, we can go south of Barber County so we can get our friends down here in Georgia in Fort Gaines, even if we take it from, yeah, I'll take the whole line, even down, all the way down here, let's take it from this point. Let's back it a little closer though so we don't get all that stuff in Central Georgia. Let's take it until we get to our viewing area. Take it just to Sumter County in there, Sly County, yeah, that's good, right about there. And I'll give you an idea. So um, Abbeville South, and you know where that is, but Shorterville, Cuthbert, we get to Randolph County, just to give you a timeline. You should be hunkered down here. It's almost 44 minutes at the hour, so we've got some time yet. And uh, all the way to uh, uh, Lizella, too. Those are the areas you want to keep a watch fly in. Cody's got some uh, damage updates here, too. Cody, go ahead and uh, tell me what you got. Well, um, I don't know if we have this video ready, but we do have some video of some flooding that is ongoing mm -hmm. in uh, Troop County at the moment. Uh, this is near the uh, Faith Baptist Church on the Hemet Road area. Or actually, this is a photo, rather, um, sent in by Amber Fuller. So we do have some flash flooding out there, although we do not have any warnings out there for flash flooding. Flooding is a concern with all this heavy rain that we are going to see with these multiple rounds of severe weather across the area. Now here's that track. We do have that tornado warning for Barber County set to expire in about 22 minutes. It should expire before that because it's going to move out of Barber County, and that would leave us with a severe thunderstorm warning for Talbot County. And then Quitman and Clay will be the only two other counties under a warning. So that would leave um, that would leave us with no tornado warnings once this uh, Barber County storm is expired or canceled because the threat for a tornado in Barber County looks like it is uh, not there at the moment as I uh, look at it right now. It looks more just like a straight line wind of event coming into Eufaula, Baker Hill along 431. And I'm going to go back up to our severe thunderstorm warning for Talbot County because we actually have a really good couplet here right on uh, Georgia 41. I'm going to step over here on the wall. This is going to be near Woodland and the Beale area. This could be an actual tornado on the ground when you have gate-to-gate -gate couplets right here. This is uh, what we're talking about, a brief spin-up tornado right along Georgia 41. Uh, this is also Georgia 36 that takes you back to Thomaston from Woodland. So uh, if you were on 36, Georgia 36, between Woodland and the county line of Talbot and Upson, you need to be in your tornado safe spot area because this is a very strong couplet here. Although we do not have a tornado warning at the moment, this is a very tight couplet here with uh, the storm located here in Talbot County. 
Uh, we do have some strong winds back towards Taubaton and the Poviti Crossroads and then Poplar Crossroads right there. But this is what we're focusing right here, uh, just north of the Beale area and just south of Woodland. Georgia 41, right there. That's where we have that strong outbound velocity and strong inbound velocity. That is where we have that rotation. And when you see it right next to one another, that is a very strong indication that we have something rapidly rotating. So if you are in, uh, know or live near Jeff Hendricks Road, uh, this is Tom Buffett Road. Uh, this is going to be Old Alabama Road, and Bob's going to put a track on it. I don't think we'll have any cities here because this is going to be a rural portion of Talbot County. But this area right here, right here in the bottom of your screen, is where that rotation is. It's going to move, I, I would ba say, east, northeast across Talbot County. So uh, if you are in, in Woodland, if you have a Woodland address, be in your tornado safe spot right now. Although we do not have a tornado warning, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning out there. This goes until 1130, so we have 20 minutes on that as uh, we are watching. But this is a very strong uh, couplet here, and we've seen many of these across the area today, and I imagine go the uh, there's that <laughs> tornado warning. I think so. Let's see here. Yeah, they're going tornado warning now. Meriwether, Talbot, and, and Upson. Yeah. There it is. That makes sense. Uh, odd polygon, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying to figure I'll this get out back here. Up here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. moving northeast. Yeah. So if you were in Woodland, Tax Crossroads, this is coming up on uh, Calibiate Springs is actually in this, just to the east of Manchester here, uh, just right around the mountain here. This is the little pig trail road that takes you across the mountain. So tracking it up here. So Wave, uh, Woodland, uh, going to pass... Uh, what is that? Cunningham Crossroads. This is uh, that's Georgia 190 right there. Georgia 190 it takes you back to 36. So Upson County, technically not our viewing area, but Roland, Sunset Village. This is going to take you into communities along uh, Georgia 74. But let's get back to that circulation right here. So Woodland, Cunningham Crossroads does not include Manchester of Meriwether County, but it does include. Calibiate Springs, which is a community just to the east of Manchester, so you need to be in your safe spot there. Uh, and Tom Buffington. Yeah, Tom Road. Tom Buffington Road. Uh, what are some more There's roads some up here? Rising uh, Sun Road. I can read them for you because I know it's so hard to see that on there. You got Old Alabama Road. Uh, let me, let me give, give you some highlights here. Old Alabama Road right through here. You're in the Jeff Hendricks Road area here, the Tom Buffington Road. There's some developments right up through here, too, and, and Rising Sun Road. And that gives you a, a Higginbooth area up through this area here. And um, this, this is moving pretty fast. And you can see this is 36, which is north of that connection here, but 41 right through here. And it is continuing to move towards the north and east awfully fast here, as Cody's pointing out. So here we are looking at uh, the latest tornado warning. And we are looking at it in Meriwether. It's kind of crossing a few counties here, just so it makes sense to you all. So when you have a tornado warning like this, Meriwether, Talbot, and Upson, Georgia uh, counties, you're, you're seeing where it's uh, kind of cutting into all these counties here. So here we are looking at uh, this portion here is uh, Meriwether County right through this area here. And then you're, you're getting out of Talbot County right through this area. And, uh, and then you get into Upson here, we get to start getting into uh, Thomaston areas as well. So those are the areas that is crossing those three counties. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to see that on that track. And this, again, is all along that same line. As we're inspecting that, I wonder uh, if Cody will be checking our friends down in Yafala too, because we've had a tornado warning down there that's now going into severe thunderstorm warning. I, ha it's, it's I haven't seen any indication of a tornado in a long time in this uh, stretch for Barber County. Yeah, it's going to the south. And, and you can see why it's almost very uniform. There's no kinks in the line. It's very straight line kind of event, and that's why I think Peachtree City now is going with the severe thunderstorm warning as it goes into Stewart County and into areas in Clay and Quitman and uh, eventually Tallahassee will probably get involved here. But it's, it's really we're looking at um, Randolph County here which I would be mindful of this whole area as this line comes south of Lumpkin. There's Lumpkin, Georgia, the north part of your screen, and then eventually coming into areas of Benevolence, Coleman, and these areas here. So if you're in Fort Gaines, at at least about uh, 27 minutes after the hour, you can see, and uh, let me just kind of pop on here for you and show you, uh, these are the areas we'd be watching for. So Lumpkin up here, here's Weston, 
And we're going to store Webster County. Uh, here's Randolph County, Shelman area uh, south of 82. Here's 27. It continues south in Coleman, Fort Gaines. And these whole areas could s be subject to uh, possible damage wind. Although the, the tornado watch is not here, it, it is here, pardon me, but the tornado warning is not this far, and neither is a severe thunderstorm warning, but the potential threat of some damaging winds this far south we're looking at. So if you are in the Eufaula area, it's not much going on there right now, except the fact that it's all going east of you. So that's some good news. So our southern portion of the storm, again, continues now to go in our Georgia side. Alabama, as we begin to talk here, East Central Alabama, looks like you're going to get a little break here until things start to crank up again later tonight. But it's almost on this sharp angle, and I could broaden it out just to give you an idea. So where that tornado warning is exiting out of the, more or less the news three viewing area, getting out of um, Talbot County and going into extreme southeast corner of Meriwether County and into Upson County, uh, it kind of, we release it over to the Macon folks over there. So anyway, here we are. Uh, Warner Robins, these areas this could still see some winds damaging as it continues to exit east. So a lot of folks may have uh, plans in our west central Georgia counties that uh, say, Bob, could we go east a little bit? Uh, you're going into it, so I would say wait at least for the next couple of hours. Um, and that would include if you have any business going farther east at this point. So that's the latest on Meriwether, Talbot County, uh, these areas here. Um, we could zoom into this one more time, but it is um, certainly, as Cody pointed out, this is, was very tight couplet earlier. In fact, um, looks like there's a little circulation south of that too, but, but I, I see this more, I have your distinct pixelation here, but it's starting to break up. So it's probably one of those things where it literally lifts up at ebb and flows and uh, kind of spins along that line. And that kink along this line has been proven to bring in some damage. We are um, getting reports, and we're going to go live, and we're going to show you. It's just not probably a, a good thing right now to be out and about in certain areas, especially around Catala. The local storm reports by the National Weather Service and emergency management reports have um, told us that nine trees were down in the town of Catala, and uh, one of the trees, when it came down, hit, hit a car, and another one was literally on a house. So this is when we were tracking us. We stayed on that the whole time, and, and that's what we our main concern was. Uh, our next concern was on Interstate 185, too. There's some, a lot of debris in the road. And even around Columbus, there were some reports. And we even had some uh, minor power outages, considering the fact that what's been going on uh, this morning, which is, which is good. You know, it could have been a, a lot of worse, I would say. So we just uh, hope and pray that everybody's um, fine with that uh, Catala damage there because anybody that was even in a car or anything, that's what we're talking about. That's the hazard. That's the threat with big events like this with wind. It doesn't have to be a tornado. I, I'm personally, when it's real broad like this, it's more, I'm more frightened by the long line of winds more than anything because you've got so many weakened trees and we're already seeing the evidence of that along this line toppling over. So uh, just to kind of recap here, um, if we could broaden out a little bit, Cody, and I apologize. Sorry to do that to you. Tell you, these young meteorologists are the best. <laughs> you guys, you, Carmen, and Kurt, we got, the, we got a good team here. Everybody's, everybody's just rocking and rolling here. But, but if you look at this whole line, look at the heavy rain associated with this, and that's the wind. It's the line right here. That's the wind beginning. It started calm. You heard from our live report from um, Diana Zito earlier who said, geez, Bob, you know, it was calm, and all of a sudden, bam, the skies opened up, and then here comes the wind, and the heavy torrential rain was blinding. It starts to move eastward. We are looking at anything and I would say anything west of this. So if you are in Omaha, you fall up and areas off towards the north and west, just be prepared for more moderate rainfall, some embedded thunder, but mainly moderate rainfall. And the severe threat, even all the way through Valley, Troop County, LaGrange, where our own Mercer Van Shore has given us live reports earlier too. And she's also out and about. We're going to go to her in just a moment to recap. Um, it seems to be doing okay. And then farther south, when we get into Harris County, uh, they, they're clear now, too. So you guys are clear. Muskogee County, you're clear. Chattahoochee County, still very heavy rain and lightning, torrential rain. But it's off to the east is what we're most concerned about. And a tornado warning that's kind of lifting out of uh, Taylor County, Talbot County, excuse me, Talbot County into Upson County is going to be leaving our new sea viewing area. So we probably won't be so focused on this too much longer, okay? So we hope and pray everybody's good up there. You guys hunker down. But everything south, uh, everything north and west of these areas here, this long line where you see all this, and I may even depict it here with a little bit of a, a squiggle. You got it, Cody? I want to give Cody a voice break there, too. Um, but you can see, just squiggle it all on that line. This is the area that anybody would be concerned about. Anything just back of this. Look at Alexander City. Look at Montgomery. Clear right now. But do not get complacent because we've got another round coming in 
later tonight into early Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. So, you know, and it may not be as long lived as this one this morning, but we certainly got to keep an eye on that. I think this, the overnight, though, could be a little long, too. So um, meteorologist Carmen Rose and meteorologist Kurt Schmitz will be handling us. Our first alert weather team is busy today. So Shortville, Cuthbert, uh, these areas here, Macon, that's the areas that got to be concerned. America's are in that. We're not leaving you out. We're not leaving our friends in Sumter County or Cuthbert. We're still with you because we got to watch our south east counties here with this. But this, indeed, is some very strong uh, winds associated with this incredible line. And right now at this juncture, it seems like where the line has kinked or bowed out here is where we actually see that spin of tornado that was uh, leaving uh, areas of Talbot County, going into Upson County, into uh, Georgia here, north and east. So if you're in Sly County, if you're in Ellaville, if you're in Plains, Americus, Cuthbert, uh, all these other areas in here, I just mentioned Fort Gaines, all the way down through these areas, be prepared over at least uh, 43 minutes after. We'll give you about another half hour. This should be completely out of the news three, half hour to 40 minutes out of the news three viewing area, the worst part of this. So we still are keeping an eye on our friends in Sumter, Sly County, um, even portions of Webster, back down into Clay Equipment and Randolph as well. Uh, Cody, I don't know if you want to weigh in at this time. I think what we're going to do here, we do want to keep up update on some damage too, but go ahead, you had something you want to say. Go um, ahead. Well, I was just noticing that this line has kicked up another little rotation right around the Talbot Taylor County line, including. Uh, Right around, I would say, maybe just to the east of uh, Butler there. Let me get some of this yeah, data everywhere. off here. Every time right it kicks. Yeah, look at yeah, that. Yeah, right around, right there. Ooh, and Yeah, it's, indeed it has. That's Bingo, it. right there. So, uh, junk, past Junction City. So, uh, yeah. Gerald, if you're in the path 208, back in uh, northern Barber, I mean, not Barber County, Taylor County, rather, in US 19, that's going to be the most... Uh, imminent threat for this tornado and we'll probably get another tornado warning with this one as this uh, couplet is very yeah uh, that's that's tight. really tight and yeah indeed that that uh, do a correlation on it just for the the heck of it it's not much out there but a lot of trees and eh, that not gonna we'll wait for a scan we'll give it a fresh scan and we'll see but um everywhere kinks we're, we're seeing that 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 is just yeah that that one right there is right on that appendage right on that end right there weather in January, folks. This is a little little unseasonable. We've had this kind of weather in history before, but it, it seems to become more um, commonplace these days. So here we are looking at this, tracking up, as uh, Cody just said, into Taylor County. Good luck. And um, that would take it into like Thickley Mill and, and Jarrell up through these areas here as it comes out. We're going to keep watching this, but it, it is leaving our um, our viewing areas shortly. And we do have some uh, areas outside of that and some interest there. But uh, as far as our southeast county, southeast of Columbus, I will keep an eye on that as well. How are we doing up here? Cody Nickel looks like it, his circulation is uh, rather broad. It broadened looks like out. it has uh, broadened out, yeah. weakened a little bit, and yeah. mainly passed the, uh, moved over the Flint River into Upson County. Bingo. Yeah, there we go. So here we are uh, <coughs> looking at the uh, end of this first genesis of this system blowing out of here and everything behind it farther west. Uh, we end up getting a ah, relief moment here for a short time. But uh, again, uh, if you are in the Butler area, we're talking Thomaston area, we, we still have the potential risk of seeing some, even though, albeit broad circulation, enough that could bring some damaging wind. This has been a damaging wind event all morning. Uh, we have two reporters out checking out uh, extensive damage in parts of Catala right now, 185, they're out and, and they're in safe now. And um, we could see these counties here that we're going to be watching. We said Webster, we're talking about Sly County, Ellaville, right along Highway 19 in the Plains and uh, Americus, and back down into uh, Randolph County as well, Cuthbert, and all the way back down to Fort Gaines. We need to watch this because this sharp line, again, despite the fact we're looking at local flash flooding, torrential rain has a potential damaging wind along with that. Uh, but the actual tornado warning, and that is now lifting in northeast out of here. We, let's see where that is again, because if it's pretty much out of our viewing area, we're going to let Macon, Georgia, handle that and take over from here on, and everywhere else, because this, is, this may become a little more burdensome for everybody. And, and again, it, it, it looks very broad. This is yeah, extremely we broad circulation. Atlanta. So, it, yeah, Atlanta and, and Macon will handle that now. We're going to get off of this, but we, we pray everybody's okay out of our friends over and and uh, areas of uh, Talbot County, so you guys should be okay. Farther south now we go, we'll watch that southeast area, and um, that's the area that we're gonna keep an eye on, farther south and east of there. So there you have it. I'm gonna let Cody uh, kind of look at that there too as well. And then I'm gonna, try to, I'm gonna try to gather a few things here, some info, and we'll be back. I wanna give a shout out to um, all the people out there today, uh, all our viewers and that keeping us updated and doing the right thing. We really appreciate that. 
As Bob said, we had one area to the north that is exiting our area, and we're going to soon get off of uh, air as that continues to move out. Now, we do have a little break of the line that is, doesn't have a severe thunderstorm warning on it, but it still is capable of producing very strong and gusty winds through Buena Vista back around Lumpkin and Stewart County. Chattahoochee County saw that heavy rain back in Omaha, starting to get a little relief from that heavy rain, some light uh, rain should be heading your way. You fall a seeing that heavy rain right now, and uh, that severe thunderstorm warning does continue for northern Clay and Quitman County as that line continues to push to the east there for our counties down towards our southern portion of the viewing area. So Cuthbert, you still have the rain to uh, deal with. Shellman, you have the rain to deal with. Preston, and Weston in Webster County has the rain to deal with as well and the gusty winds with it. Americus, you're not out of the woods yet because this is round one, hasn't gotten to you just yet, maybe in the next 30 minutes. So around the noon hour, you'll be getting your fair share of some heavy rain and gusty winds. But the main tornadic threat has moved out of the area, although we were watching a very strong couplet in Taylor County. We'll zoom up and see if that is still there as this area of rotation uh, continues to show that there is a very tight couplet there just to the uh, north uh, or in northern Taylor County rather, uh, just north of uh, the highway there. I believe that is going to be, that's going to be um, the uh, Fall Line Freeway at 90, uh, Georgia 96. It takes you from Junction City to the bypass around Butler. Going to be up coming up around 208. No tornado warning yet on this storm. Uh, National Weather Service holding off on issuing anything just yet. It may just be a brief spin up, but when you get these brief spin ups, it's hard to issue a warning when you see a rotational couplet already on. Uh, on velocity, it's already producing damage, so the tornado warning would be late anyway. And here we do have that tornado warning just come out. Goes until noon for Crawford, Taylor, and Upson County. This is going to be north of the Butler area, uh, including Gerald, Fickle Mill, uh, U.S. Highway 19 is going to be impacted between the uh, county line of uh, actually stretching into Upson County, and they are going observed with this tornado as well. I don't know if we have anything on our correlation coefficient, a little junky there on the left-hand side of your screen, but we do have a good indication that this is on the ground and rotating right here. This is um, an old scan, so we should be waiting for an update here across uh, parts of Taylor County. So if you live in Gerald, Fickle Mill, and then you get into areas that is covered by the Macon TV market of Macon, Georgia, that they cover uh, Crawford County. Upson County belongs to the Atlanta TV market. So we'll hand it all over to them once it gets past uh, Car uh, Carsonville, Gerald, and Fickle Mill. Uh, this is where we have another brief spin up. We've had these all morning starting in Elmore County is where we, we started on air, actually started in Troop County early this morning. Then we went to Elmore County and then it moved into Lee County. And this is basically the same system that moved through Auburn, Harris County. It's just produced these brief spin ups and then reformed a new circulation. So that's what we've dealt with all morning going on 1130 right now. So 30 minutes up until noon hour, 1030 uh, central across the area. But Alabama just seen some heavy uh, rain right now and should start to be thinning out across uh, our East Alabama counties. You see just some light moderate rain stretching back from Greenville, Alabama through Troy, Union Springs, Bullock and Macon County, and then Auburn's still seeing some rain out there, but we still have damage reports coming in and our team is working to get those out there to you. We also have some power outages um, being reported to us, so we'll get those. Um, and we've also got some reported to us that they are without power. So uh, this is just round one. We're gonna have multiple rounds of severe weather and I will actually show you the future cast here um, and time it out for you as we get into the later portion of the day. We have another round around midnight. Here we go, raincast models. This is actually a little slow because uh, it, it is already 1130 and this is pushed through so 
This could be a little earlier than midnight tonight based on our RPM if it's lagging behind. Another round of showers and thunderstorms, even potential for another tornado out of these cellular storms continuing into the overnight on Sunday morning. 2 a.m. could be earlier or later depending on our RPM adjustment there. And that continues all the way through the morning hour. And then we turn our attention to Sunday afternoon. This is going to be another area of concern as the upper level low sends its last wave of energy out across the area. So you see that band of rain across central Alabama. That's going to be the main or the, the last line of showers, but we're going to be watching for development to our south. Dothan, Albany, Americus, that's where we could see these cellular storms producing potentially long track tornadoes across the area. You see about 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon coming into East Alabama, parts of uh, our southern area around Americas too. Now this continues to push out around 4, so this is the last wave of energy. And then you see around Monday, we finally get clear of this system, leaving some residual moisture and cloudiness around the area. So it will still affect us across the area uh, for tomorrow. But here's the next 24 hours. You can see in the 70s and upper 60s out there across the Chattahoochee Valley. A little break this afternoon, so we will see the sun that may destabilize the atmosphere and help regenerate the instability out there after this round of weather right here. And then you can see around the 11 o'clock hour into the overnight, you have those thunder showers out there. And that goes until 11 a.m., so this could be a very active, or it will be an active day for your Sunday. And Let's get to that seven day forecast. You can see it's going to be a weather aware day for the rest of today or rest of today and tomorrow as we wait another round of weather. Bob. All right, Cody. Thank you. And and again, uh, we're going to be waiting on. We have a lot of uh, folks out there. They want to make sure we keep you safe. We'll keep you updated on social. You know, hashtag WRBL WX or any kind at, at News 3. You can uh, post these pictures and keep us updated, but you need to be safe. We want you all to be safe in respect to that. The tornado warning is uh, we were talking about is out of the News 3 uh, viewing area pretty much uh, exiting out of uh, areas in Upson County, Georgia. And uh, we continue to monitor this line farther south coming into our southeast counties uh, for the fact that we could still see some damaging wind with them. It doesn't look as uh, sharp. Let's look at velocity. And perhaps that can give us a better scan and understanding. Again, it's amazing how we're seeing this. It's almost like an upper level. It's like a comma. We've got an area of low pressure, and it's dragging like a quick surface front almost in a sense. And <clears throat> looking at what we're seeing here, uh, what is likely a tornado uh, that is exiting. And here's Butler, Georgia, and all, all areas outside of Talbot County. This is areas that are really extending out of the news reviewing area. But we may have one or two people with some concerns here, but it is lifting north and east out. That's the only area right now that we're looking at this as far as like areas of Crawford, Taylor, and Upson County. So our friends at Taylor County, with its uh, extreme northern portion there, it is leaving there very shortly. It's, uh, it's kind of staying north of uh, the highway here as it goes into central Georgia, this whole line, and you can see how it's kind of extending. And this is still, believe it or not, part of 208 before it goes into 128, where it intersects up here at this uh, area. So what are we looking at as far as farther south? It's just the wind and the rain at this point. And as far as uh, us being on top of the rest of the weather this afternoon, well, we're going to get a little break behind, as Cody just told you, with the forecast. So we are online, and we'll be back again tonight. The first alert weather team, it, it, we do have the largest uh, meteorologist on staff. We're, we're uh, excited to be uh, part of this and letting us be in your uh, rooms, and, but, but keeping you safe. And that's really important to us and makes us feel special that we could do this for you. We're, we're going to stop right about now. I think it's best that we just kind of hang back. If anything does come back down south and east into Sumter County and our county south and east of here, we're going to keep it up online for you. You can see the live stream, and we will break in. We will break in if necessary to do just that. Uh, as far as anything else at this point, like threatening weather, we're going to kind of back off of that. that. That's good, but we can still see some damaging winds with this entire line south and east. And if anything else does develop, uh, trust me, we'll pop in here and wouldn't be surprised if something could still do that. But at the nature of the way this is coming in, we don't see that kink on the line like the history has been proving all morning long. 
uh, around Catala and all the way back up here in places across Interstate 185 in Harris County, they had some damage already reported. We're investigating that. Even Columbus, we have some areas of concern too from thunderstorms and of course the winds that have been in the vicinity. It doesn't take much to weaken these tree limbs. WRBL.com, downloading our Facebook app. And as Cody told you, we'll have the rest of the First Alert weather team on your side. We are around the clock. We are not leaving. And we have meteorologist Carmen Rose coming up tonight with the latest forecast and analysis, along with senior meteorologist Kurt Schmitz, who will be there as well as we get into midnight hour for our second round. That second round is, is something we need to watch, and it's something that's going to likely be in here perhaps coming up around midnight. So we go almost 12 hours after this, hopefully, of getting a little break, a little breather, and let the, the roads drain off a little bit from all the heavy rain. You guys have yourself a safe day. Please be careful out there and don't go close to any power lines. We want you to be safe and, uh, and trust us that we, we love that you want to go out and give us some pictures, but we want you to be safe in the process. So have yourself a safe day. We're still here and we're still weather aware coming up.